Good afternoon, everyone. We are going up. Oh, hello. We are going to go to our um, class. Just give me a minute. Gotta find it first. <laughs> It's not there. See, that's what I was talking about. I was working on a class, so you're just going to have to excuse me. All right, 2401. That's us right here. Okay. So our class is already set. One of the things that I'm going to ask you is that you read the syllabus. I haven't yet updated just the the one thing, which is the calendar. But other than that, everything's just fine. Uh, let me see here. We are going to, uh, I haven't, haven't gotten rid of some of these things either. Sorry, I, I actually had done all of it. But for some reason, it didn't save, and I had to re-download the old class <laughs> and start again. So, but this is where it, it'll all start right here, where it says preliminary skills. Okay, all these other stuff is not going to come into it. I'm going to erase it here shortly. But, okay, preliminary skills are just um, certain places that you can go to remember maybe or revise or review or whatever you want to call it um, certain concepts that we're going to be using for example negative numbers so you don't remember so you click on that and it takes you to a tutorial that explains negative numbers and it gives you a number line and it shows you what they are and how they look and this is one of the first things we'll be using because we are going to be doing scientific notation pretty soon which means we're going to need negative numbers and this is when i say six minus minus three for example i'll say oh that adds because you know how that works when you have two negative signs it becomes a positive um, and so on and so forth. There's a video, you know, and, and even a little place where you can test if you remember things. Okay, so that's just something that I put up there just because a lot of people may not remember. Okay, so let's go back to our course. And like I said, I'm going to be getting rid of all of this stuff like this, for example, this is, see, I'm just gonna show you, this is all going to go goodbye, right here, delete. Don't need any of that. <laughs> so all of that's gonna go away. Um, after that, the very first thing we're going to be doing is this, which is what I was telling you. We're doing scientific notation, significant figures, mass, weight, temperature, heat. Um, now, in order for me to see what you see, I really need to put it in student view, but then I can't do anything with it. But basically what you should be seeing is this same thing, right? Pretty much, except he, you know, you're not allowed to change things, so. Okay, like I said, all of this will be going right here. But we're starting with preliminary skills. And the scientific notation, actually the very first thing we are going to do is this, but there are some links here. And if you actually want to, you can go to rounding and significant figures after we do our first one, just to remember how to do that. Now there is an assignment, it's called mass and weight and temperature and heat. Now for this one, it is a very simple assignment. Basically it says provide the definitions of mass, weight, temperature, and heat. 
when I'm referring to mass, I mean mass as in chemistry. I don't want to hear it is an amorphous object or something like that because that's not mass. Mass is for chemistry is the amount of matter contained in an object, basically. I don't want to hear any other thing because it's it's like like whenever somebody says, oh, you have a mass in, you know, in your body, and that, that means you have probably a tumor. And that's not the kind of mass we're talking about here. Although it does have matter, <laughs> which makes it a mass also, but still not the right kind of mass. And then you are going to compare what mass and weight are, stating both differences and similarities. And then you're going to go and tackle temperature and heat. And you're going to also state the differences and similarities. And that's basically it. And you are going to get 25 points for that. Now, let me go back to home, I guess. I clicked the wrong one. There we go. All right. And I'm going to. Um, oh, and the textbook that you'll be using is this one. Um, this is a online textbook. And the things that we'll be using right here are, um, if you go to, hold on. Where are you? Yeah, that's what I meant to do. Table of context. Okay, so you notice how we are in measurements. Okay, so that's where we're starting. We're starting with measurements. This, this, all of this stuff right here. 1.456. And then we are going to be doing more of that. And we're also doing the phases and classification of matter and the physical and chemical properties that is afterwards. So we are kind of skipping around, but you can find it if you just look for the name of whatever we're looking for. We're looking at at this point. Okay, let me see. Go back to home again. All right. Now, um, in my case, I have homeworks already set for you, and they are these sheets right here. Hold on. Here we go. Um, these are the ones that we're going to be using to practice, you know, while we're online. But these right here, where it says assignment one, two, three, those are your assignments. And this was a um, lecture that I had done before, but I'm going to get rid of that one and put the one as we do it. If it allows me, because a lot of the times it doesn't allow me to do long lectures like I usually do. I could do little um, recordings of just the main topics, just when I explain. And that's what I'm, I'm thinking of doing um, and putting it on, on a YouTube link instead. But I have to first do a YouTube <laughs> before I can do all that. And that way you guys can, will have access to the lectures if you need to go back and look at it. Now, you know that they said, and that's one of the first things I needed to show you, it's this welcome message. I don't know if you've read it already, but this is one of the things that um, they asked us to do is that we are going to be doing um, a hybrid format after we come back. So that means that part of the class will be online and part of the class will be in person. Now, I decided to do it like this, Wednesdays, and then online Mondays and Fridays, it's for everybody. And, and, you know, I mean, according to the protocol that they gave us is Fridays is always online. So Mondays will be in person. I mean, Wednesdays will be in person. Mondays will be online. 
and then Fridays will also be online. And that's it. And this is just a suggestion that I give you because this is not an, an easy course that you just take to, you know, to do something, no. We want to actually have a productive time here. All right, now on here, we have different um, parts to every single thing that we do. Here, I will have a discussion also, and that would be under, let's see, where are you, discussion? <laughs> I have to find it, hold on. I don't think there's a discussion on this one just yet. Uh, this one has one, yes. Okay, so that right there, that's your discussion on this one. This is where it starts. We're starting with, um, yeah, because we don't have, I mean, I could put one if you guys wanted me to on scientific notation and such, but I don't think I have one as of yet. Discussions are good because they help you see other people's views. And I try to ask questions that are pretty open-ended so that you can all contribute. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen one of my discussions, but let me show you what that is. Okay, so this is how it works. You have a question, right, that you must answer. And then you have to contribute four times more to the class in a period of um, two separate days. In other words, you can do two and two if you want. And um, a substantive response would be one that doesn't just say, oh, I agree, I see your point, I like your answer, none of that. Mm -mm. It actually needs to say something like, um, you can always praise, that's not a problem. I agree with your, Point, but did you think about what such and such scientists said, which I consider to be very important because blah, blah. Okay, so something like that. So you need to actually add something. And in addition to that, um, there is one more requirement that I'm gonna add. And that is just because you don't wanna just speak out of the blue just give me the source of the information um, that you're using because that way it, it is for sure going to be a, what would you call it, a substantive contribution to this discussion. Okay, let me go back to home again. All right. So basically, our class is going to be assignments. No, like I said, I'm going to get rid of all that. Assignments, we're going to do test, of course. Might do a quiz or two here and there. If I just say, take out a piece of paper and write this down and, and give me an answer, you know, and that'll be it or I can do a poll on here or whatever, but it's just something that just to, to test the level of understanding as what's gonna be like. And let's see here, what else we got? All of our contributions here, all, all of our um, modules that you're seeing here have except for the, the first two, of course. Um, starting with atomic theory scientists have their own um, assignments and their own discussions. Now, this one is a unique one because you can actually do it whenever you feel like, because this is one that I put online. So what you do is you go here and you notice it says, 
that you will do all of this and go to vision learning. So if you click on that, which I'm going to do a new tab just because I can. All right. Then you're going to read these first five modules, early ideas, atomic theory, one, two, three, and four. And from there, you're going to do the assignment. And let me go back. See, this is why I did it, open it, opened it like that. Okay. So let me go back home again. Every time I go home, I gotta go all the way down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, here we go. There we go. All right. So then you have a bonus. Okay. So there are quizzes within here. Each one of these has, let's say, you click on it. You read about it and you notice there's a quiz. That quiz, after you answer it, and let me just do a couple of questions real fast. And, um, okay. That one, okay. So let's say I'm done. I'm going to make a horrible grade, but I'm going to go ahead and score it and see how it gave me my score. OK, so here what you're going to do is you're going to do a print screen. And in order to do a print screen on a computer, you can do control print screen. And the next thing to do is you can go to a Word document. and paste it. See that? Okay. That's how I would do it. And that way it's just one document. All five in there in one place, boom, 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 you know, and you get your bonus, All right? That is the first module that I should actually move it up because I would like you guys to do that one as soon as you can and start getting it in there. Um, I have not yet opened any of these, I will. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to move this guy up to the top, which I can't right now, because I'm gonna leave the student view. That'll be our first one. It actually makes sense because that's how it all started for us to go up to the top one. Okay, let's see. All right, so I need to move you up here. <laughs> I'm dragging it in. Come on. And, and actually even be before preliminary skills because that those preliminary skills are not necessary for this. So this is your first thing you're doing, this atomic theory scientist. And then you've got an assignment. No, you don't have an assignment. Never mind. Just the bonuses, the quiz, which should be ready. Let me see. Make sure it is. Okay. It is not on here. Hmm. I am not seeing it. So it did not. Okay, so I'm gonna change this quiz to an assignment and we'll, we won't have to do this one. I'll put something else up here. I just noticed that it's not working. Hmm, that is unusual. Why is it not working? Everything's on there except the questions. <laughs> See these things, these glitches. Whenever you discover a glitch, please let me know because this is all a new course and it will have to be tweaked here and there. And when I do that, you know, like if I forgot to open something or something like that, it's all part of what I do. It is, um, now the test should come open though. Let me see if test one opens. I'm just out of curiosity because now 
Now you got me wondering. Here we go. Test one. That should open. It says August, but don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll change all that. All right. Yeah. Okay. See, I can preview this one. The other one didn't have a preview. I didn't see it. Yeah, this one is. Okay, good. Good. We do have a quiz on this one. So I didn't see it on the other one. Or did you guys see it? Because I didn't see it. No? Okay. Let me go back here and see something. Let me make sure. Because if it is there, then I should just leave it alone. I did not see it. I did not see that button. Maybe I just didn't go far enough down. Let me see here. Like I said, I'm going to get rid of all of that. This is where we start now. Instead of preliminary skills, it'll be atomic theory. All right, let me check again. <laughs> oh, there it is. I just didn't see it. I guess it had gotten stuck. There we are. So we do have questions. Yay. Okay, never mind then. I will not be changing it. <laughs> I'll just be opening it. Okay, so you all have any questions at this point? Oh, there is one more thing. If you don't have any questions, I have a lab and I need to show you how that works. Okay, so the lab is right here already. You see that? Everything is under home. It's all under assignments. So you just go to assignments and you go straight in. The first thing you'll do is lab safety. And as you can see, it is a simulation. And you just click it right here. Boom. And it should load. It takes a while to load and you cannot leave the premise, you know, this particular page. So if you do, it'll stop. And believe me, it does. It does take a little bit because it's got really good graphics. So you'll feel like you're playing a game. It usually hangs around 24, 25, and then all of a sudden it just loads it up fast. There it goes. See? <laughs> and now it's stops a little bit and then you're, you're able to enter. Okay, so this is lab safety, basically. Welcome to the lab safety simulation. I am Dr. One, your AI lab assistant. Today, you will learn everything you need to know to survive your first day in the lab. Are you ready for the challenge? This simulation uses voiceovers. If you don't have audio, click the speaker symbol on the top right of your lab pad to switch the play mode. If you disable the sound effects, the lab pad will slide up whenever there are instructions to read. You can select what type of audio you prefer. Deselecting any of the options will mute that option. Click continue to learn how to navigate through your using the lab pad as an important way to get the most out of this simulation. Is this the first time you've played a labster simulation? If you say yes, then you know it'll show you how to use it and all that. But I'm, I'm not going to sit here and do this one. I just wanted you to see that it does work. It's very straightforward. And the good thing about the lab pad is that you have um, theory. See, good lab practices, life safety, hazard symbol, safety equipment. All of that's here for you. And as you go through the mission, it's going to say, each one of these has been completed. This is set for 100% completion. So make sure you complete it, the entire thing. Okay, that's all. Um, and then once, and how do you get scored? Well, there will be questions. And I'll say no, because it's not for me, but <laughs> okay. First, find a lab coach. Click on it to See put how it, on. it gives you these arrows? These arrows are for you to slide over there and grab your lab coat. Now pick up the safety goggles and you are ready to go. Okay, I don't see 
to the safety group. I guess they're still over. Oh, there they are. <laughs> okay. Two. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Safety goggles. Okay. Click on the door to enter the laboratory. See how it, it gives you these three little arrows? That's what it wants you to do. This lab was used by first year chemistry students, and they obviously didn't leave it in the safest condition. Find mm -hmm. five safety hazards and click on them. Okay, let's find out. Oh, that's one right there. Well spotted. Every lab <laughs> has two emergency exits, which ensure that nobody gets cornered in the event of a fire. The emergency door isn't any good if it is blocked by objects. Right. Click on the hand cart to move it to a safe location. Well done. The emergency exits have to always be clear. Okay. One hazard down, four more to go. Identify the hazards by clicking on them. I guess you have to come in. <laughs> I guess not. Let me see what else. Oh, here we go. That's it. This bench looks very messy. Yes. It is important to keep the lab bench tidy. Any clutter should be cleared away before starting a new experiment, and there yes. should be no hazardous chemicals left on a workbench. That's right, especially- There are three the more hazards. Can you find yeah. them? I'm looking. Oh, here's one. <laughs> oh, darn, dude. This is bad right here. For sure. Want. Chemicals need to be stored in designated cupboards and not just placed on the floor. This is especially important for reactive chemicals. Flammable liquids need to be stored in fireproof cabinets. There are two more hazards. Can you find them? Yes, this. A sink full of dirty glassware isn't a nice <laughs> surprise. Make sure you always clean, dry, and put away the equipment after every experiment. Let's remove the glassware. <laughs> okay. Beautiful, clean and tidy. There is one more hazard. Click on it. It's right here. I can, <laughs> if I can just go there. Hold on. Uh, it's right here in this thing. The fume hood constantly draws See? air through a filter to ensure that you don't get in contact with dangerous chemicals. The airflow only works effectively if the glass sash is pulled down. Yeah. Let's notice. close this fume hood. What a relief. Now the air is safe to breathe. There. Time to take care of the hazardous chemicals on boxes. Click on them to have a closer look. Okay. The boxes, okay. Click on the bottle containing flammable liquid. Check yes. the media tab yes, for this help. This one right here. See, this is where you would go to the media right here. And it tells you which one of those is flammable, that one, okay, see? So now you know which one and you can answer. It's this one. Well done. The red diamonds on the bottles are called hazard symbols. Each of them depicts a different hazard. Have a look at the following overview of the different hazard symbols. Okay. Which symbol depicts an oxidizing reagent? Okay, so see if you go to media again, right? Oxidizing reagent. I think this is this guy right here. Yep. See? Okay, so now you know. And you will say that one. This one. Oh, well, I need to do it on this. Sorry. <laughs> um, go back to home, right? And it's this guy. Option D. Precisely. Oxidizing reagents are very dangerous because they can accelerate chemical reactions, such as fires, by providing electronegative atoms. Ooh, what does the following symbol mean? Okay, so once again, go to media, if you don't remember, and you notice it says health hazard, right? If you can see it, see? All right, so now you go back and you say that. Mm -hmm means C, health hazard. You got it. There are many kinds of health hazards. See how Substances the, with this symbol can cause respiratory right problems, here? induce mutations in cancer, or may be toxic to specific organs. Yeah, your points are increasing Here is an image of the hazard stuff. symbol on the box. What does it mean? 
What does that mean? Well, it is interesting. Let's find out. What does that mean? This one, explosive. Okay, that's what I figured. <laughs> but, okay, go back home. And I don't see it on there. <laughs> that's why, I, oh, that's why, because. Well done. These chemicals definitely don't belong here. Definitely. Imagine if somebody walks into the pile and the glass bottles fall onto the floor. Oof. If they break, they could light a fire and the explosives next to them would certainly produce a bombastic news story. <laughs> Before you touch anything else, you better put on some gloves. Okay. Click on the glove box to put some on. Yeah, there we go. Click on the bottles to remove them. Let's get rid of this safety hazard. Oh, Click on the nice. cluttered workbench to tidy it up. Oh dear, this workbench is a real mess. Hopefully, you will never see something like this in a real lab. Let's take care of the problems one by one. Start with turning off the Bunsen burner. It is very dangerous to keep an open flame unattended. Turn off the Bunsen burner flame. Great. Mm -hmm. Now click on an object that you should never bring into the lab. Food somewhere. <laughs> A food or drink, probably. Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh, right here. Lobster cola. <laughs> well spotted. Food and drink are strictly prohibited in the lab. Mm -hmm. Imagine if somebody grabbed the wrong bottle by mistake and took a sip of the toxic substance. Mm -hmm. That's not a good There's point. another object that doesn't belong here. Find it. Hmm. I do not see it. Anyway, but do you guys see it? Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> exactly. Personal <laughs> equipment is not supposed to be placed on workbench surfaces. Could you imagine what would happen if this backpack caught fire? Oof. There is a living organism on this bench. Can you find it? Yes. Oh, have a look at this. There is a bacteria colony growing on this acre plate. This might be some dangerous pathogen. We need to use a special bin for biological waste. Discard the Petri dish with the unknown bacterial sample in the biohazard waste bin. There is still a protocol from a previous experiment on the table. Clean up the lab protocol. Oh. Oops, you just spilled a hazardous chemical. Have a look at the hazard symbol on the beaker. What does the hazard symbol on the beaker mean? I think it means it's corrosive. Brilliant. This is a corrosive <laughs> chemical. We are dealing with either an acid or a base. You can use a pH indicator to figure out what it is. You only need a tiny drop of the indicator. You can use a micro pipette for this. Pick up the pipette from its holder. Now pick up a pipette tip from the box. Draw up a drop of the indicator liquid. Now add a drop to the spill to identify if it's an acid or a base. Fantastic. When you added the indicator liquid to the spill, the drop turned red. This means the spilled chemical must be a strong acid. We need to neutralize it before cleaning Making it up. Soda. Strong acids react with your skin can cause burns. That's why it's very important to protect your hands with gloves. First, discard the tip in the trash bin and put the pipette back on its holder. Spills of strong acids or bases have to be neutralized before you can dispose of them. Sodium bicarbonate is the chemical yeah. term for baking soda. It neutralizes the acid so and the sodium? remains can be scooped into a plastic bin and discarded. Let's neutralize this acid spill. Pick up the baking soda. I'm looking for it. Oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> Doesn't have a name. Put baking soda on the spilled solution. Well done. Now put the neutralizer back on the shelf. Now it is safe to use absorbent paper to clean up the spill. The neutralized acid can be disposed of in the solid chemical waste. Usually, the chemical waste is stored in a fume hood. During the cleanup, 
Your gloves got contaminated. You need to dispose of them to avoid spreading chemicals over everything you touch. Click on the trash bin to discard your contaminated gloves. Why didn't you just clean the spill with water? <laughs> because why? What do you think? I'm not. You know, if you don't know, you look for theory. And there it is. So what do you think? Because of that, but it also reacts with the other one. So which one? You notice it says view theory. So that's how you do it. You look, then you check, then you keep going anyway, but I'm not gonna go through the whole lab, but I just wanted you to see that it is uh, like a like playing a little game, pretty much, you know, like a computer game anyway. So when you're doing that, you are, doing the labs along with the lecture and um, let me see here. I think if I go home, there's a, I think I put an announcement. Let me see if that's in there. Yeah. Okay. There it is. To see, it tells you here. All simulations are, okay, so let's read it. You keep a lab notebook just as you would in a regular lab. Make sure to read your syllabus for instructions. Thank you. Okay. So basically what I want you to do is keep a lab notebook because you're going to be doing a lab report, a final lab report, and that's going to be your main grade, you know, your big grade. Everybody else is 100 points, yes, but this is like 20% of your grade. So in order to do a lab report, you are going to have a one of these, and it's not on here yet, but I'm gonna put it in. These are just the, the assignments. They're called the assignments, which that would be an assignment also. And um, I'm gonna put in some um, resources for you to know how to write a lab report and there's a PowerPoint and there's um, a link to how to lab, how to write a lab report also. And it tells you exactly what's, what parts need to be on there and everything else and what needs to be on there. So some of these are not conducive to writing a lab report, <clears throat> but like, um, let's see, lab safety, experimental design, redox, solution preparation, titration, and advanced assets and bases. All of these are good. Now you're going to do a scientific method one, two. I'm looking for one that I was thinking of, and I don't see it. That's one of the ones that needs to be on here. Not, I am not seeing, so I'm going to add one more. I'll add one here and there, but there's a, a few more that need to be added there. Um, let's see. So that's the lab part. Okay, so now, <laughs> now that I've shown you the lab, do you guys have any questions at all? No, ma'am, I don't. Everybody understood everything? How to do everything? 
Okay. Well, I need to take attendance. So this is this is my first time ever taking attendance because last time we did it all online. So I'm not sure how to do this. So hold on. <laughs> I have to learn myself all these things. But I think I saw where it says attendance. So there it is. Okay. Attendance. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. I see, I see you here. Okay, I can't mark all of you present because you're not all here. Only four of you are here. And that's, um, hmm. How do we do this? See, this is something I've never done. <laughs> this class. Well, it says Monday, so I guess I'll just click on you, huh? All right, so can you give me your names? Because I can't see who's here when I'm doing this. So can you give me your names, please? Jabria Pickens. Jabria, okay, there, thank you. Who else? Can you give me their names? <laughs> I'm Kaylee, Kaylee Johnson. Kaylee Johnson, okay. Who else? Tiana Perkins. Luna, okay. One more. Who's the other one? Hmm. Okay, I can look, but um, obviously. Okay, one of the things that it says is that we need to be with our cameras on. So this one, this is Brie. Okay, so who is the other person? Do you guys know her? Or no? No, ma'am. Okay, Brie. Oh, gosh. Brioche, maybe? That sounds like a Brie, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna say she's here. <laughs> Oops. Okay. All right. So that is it um, for today. We will um, meet again Wednesday, same time, same way. Hopefully, more people will join us by then. Hi. You all have a great rest of your Monday. You, you too. too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.